thank you for joining us today. And I say joining, I didn't say just, you know, welcome to the show. I want to say join us because we want you to join in today. And participate. Yes, don't just sit and watch. You're not watching today. You're joining today, so join us today. If you have an exercise ball, run and grab your exercise ball. And we are going to use those today. If you don't have one, don't worry. You can do these exercises standing up or maybe on your couch. But today we want to talk about... We're going exercise. to talk about exercise, fitness, and we're going to do a health quiz. So, and we really want to talk about the difference between exercise and physical activity. So, exercise would be us grabbing the dumbbells and doing resistance training, and you know, about 98% of society probably really doesn't like to exercise. <laughs> so, what we want to encourage you to do is get physical like activity. Me. Yeah, like both of us. I mean, it's no fun for you to just sit there and go like this with dumbbells. So that's why we always do weird, fun shows, just to try to get you to get some physical activity. Other ways to get physical activity are through hobbies. You can play, you know, pickleball. You can just go for a walk around the neighborhood. Those are physical activities that are also exercise. So we want to encourage you to get some kind of physical activity. Definitely do resistance training for strength, which we'll talk about in a minute. But find a physical activity that you enjoy. It can be an exercise ball, it can be tennis, it can be golf, whatever it is, something physical that uh, you can do just to get some exercise. Yeah, because it gets you outdoors, and that's so, so important yeah. to be outdoors. So are we going to do our... Well, let's talk about the reason you want to exercise and you want to get physical activity is for your muscles. Yes. Uh, we start to lose muscles if you don't use them. If you don't use it, you lose it. Pretty simple. And especially as we age, you start to get older, you start to lose muscle mass um, at a faster rate than you would when you're younger. And we want to encourage you, you know, you want to live as healthy and as long as you can. And the longer you live, the healthier you want to be. Um, it's called aging well, yes. aging strong. And I mean, we're all aging, so let's do that to the best of our ability. And there are a lot of tips for that, to recognize whether or not you're losing the ability to do something. Yeah, so you want to exercise and do resistance training or do your physical activity just to keep your muscle tone or to even build more muscle, really for everyday activities. I mean, you notice we, we aren't bodybuilders, kind of evident, um, but we do want to stay strong as we get older for simple things. I mean, Lori. Everyday tasks. Lori still mows the lawn. Yeah, well, you know, it's so funny because we were at our daughter's house and she wanted me to, we were picking something up and she's like, oh, mom, don't do that. And I'm like, are you kidding? I can do that. She goes, no, it weighs like 50 pounds. I said, that's not a problem. So the key in that is that you want to recognize whether or not you lose the ability of doing something. And so we like to mow our lawn. It's getting us outside because we're in the studios all the time. We're in our office. So we like to go outside and we like to run, mow our lawn. And for me, I do it, and he does all the other stuff, because I want to be able to <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I want people to think, what a chauvinist. I, I he makes her not do the yard. Yeah, no, trust me, I do everything else she yeah, mows. We do it together. <laughs> but I do it for a reason. And I remember at one time, Rob was like, oh, you know, no, let me do that one. No, I need yeah. to do this. And I do it because I need to. I want to continue to know as I get older that I can mow the lawn. Not that, oh my gosh, you know, I'm 70 now and I can't do this. So that's a key, recognizing can you continue to do activities, maybe not mowing your lawn, but I do it by choice. Yeah, everyday activities. Yeah. It can be, you know, carrying your luggage at an airport or yes. a, a, and then, you know, putting your, <laughs> your luggage up into the overhead compartment. Or it if can, you're gardening oh, yeah. and you're used to doing gardening for years and you love that, you don't want to lose the ability of um, being able to lift a 20 pound or a 40 pound bag of mulch or dirt or whatever it is, you want to keep that strength. And part of being active in that way is another clue. What am, can I not do that that way? So what do I need to do to get back to that? Yeah, and that's what we're going to present today, what we call the ABCs of physical activity or exercise. So our ABCs are to help you build that strength, to build the muscle but not just the muscle. We're gonna address all of these and we'll, we'll give the definition in a second for the acronym, but you wanna actually, she's talking about lifting the bag. So if, if we just did you know, resistance training and just did, you know, let's say deadlifts or squats or things like that, you're just moving one direction. We encourage you to do multiple directions and multiple muscle groups. So when you pick up, let's say a bag of mulch or dog food or something like that, and you're gonna put it in your trunk, you don't just squat and lift it up. You've gotta squat, lift it, turn, bend, lean over. And you know, that's where a lot of people get back injuries and things when they twist. So as you exercise or do your physical activity, we encourage you to do multiple motions, some of the things we're going to do today. Um, well, you just covered one of them, agility. Well, let's start with that. So it's the ABCs of exercise for today. Yep. A is for agility, 
B is for balance, C is coordination, and then the S is for strength. So we're gonna do just four simple exercises today that address each one of those. So first let's give the definition and then we'll show the exercise. So agility is the ability to move quickly and easily. Exercise, pick up a ball, and we're going to do, do a, we're actually going to do a waltz, a little dance. Waves. You guys are going to have fun with that. So <laughs> agility is the ability to move quickly and easily. You think of it a lot in sports, you know, football, they'll use ladders and, you know, step inside the ladder to get the, the foot speed, basketball, tennis. A lot of people will use a quick agility drill for that speed that you're going to need during that sport or during but your physical activity. Even, a, even children, as they begin to learn agilities, um, hopscotch. It's That's a great, agility. great, yes. I mean, you know, you think about simple things that keep you agile that actually keeps your balance. We should have set up a hopscotch. I didn't even thing think today. about that. Okay, <laughs> All right, so, so then, hey, agility. Yep. Let's do our agility drill first. You want to, oh, we're going to stand up. Gonna... Yeah, we'll do them one at a time. Okay. I'm good with that. She's going to hold her ball. If you don't have a ball, you don't need it. You could grab Let's a pillow. My glasses, we encourage please. you to have something. <laughs> oh, watch out for that. <laughs> but to start off with your agility drill, we're just going to step once to the right. And you're gonna, we're gonna show you how first, then we'll go a little faster. Then forward, then left, and then back. So it's a waltz. Basically, we're doing a waltz. We could play some nice waltz music. So <laughs> now you're gonna go as quick as you can. It's one step right, forward, left, and back, and go. So you're gonna go right, you're gonna go forward, you're gonna go left, and you're gonna go back. Now that's not easy enough. So now we're gonna add a second step. So now two steps, as fast as we can. Two to the right, two forward, watch her glasses, two left, <laughs> and two back. And then you're gonna do three. And three, one, two, three. We're gonna shuffle, one, Two over her glasses, one, two, three, and back. One, two, three. And that's our agility that's drill agility. for the day. You can keep doing that at home. You could add four steps, five steps, go all the way around or your do living it room, for do it a outside. Or two minutes, but that is, and you don't have to have a ball. You don't have to hold something. We just happen to be holding our fitness. All right, so that was our agility drill for today. And you can modify that, do whatever you want at home. We just thought the dance move would be kind of fun. Now we're on to our B's, which is balance. Which What's is the definition of balance? Even distribution of weight, right? It's an even distribution of weight and enabling someone or something to remain upright and steady. Right, so upright and steady is the key to balance. Um, so if you don't have a tennis, or a tennis ball, that'd be hard to balance on. If you don't have an exercise <laughs> ball today, you can do this on your couch, or better yet, just stand up. You can do this standing. So all we're gonna do for our balance, we're gonna get good upright posture so your spine is nice and straight, and you're just gonna lift one leg. Oh, that's, this is one of my favorites. It's gonna work your core, it's gonna work the thigh just to hold and support it. You're really using your whole core, you know, from here to here to balance on the ball. I'm not doing very well. Yeah, if you don't have a ball, you can there. just stand and do it one leg. Then you're gonna switch legs. So this is our balance, as Lori explained, to, it takes, to remain upright. Yeah, it takes, it, this is great for the core, but it takes, I literally, I mean, I'm doing this on purpose, but it takes balance to do this. And that now is- Now the leg, one foot. Important. So balance is very important. Yeah, if you don't have the exercise ball, just stand and do this. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, then we were gonna do that. Yeah, you so can just you stand and just stand on one leg make sure and hold it out up. straight, which will really work your quad. Yeah, so that's the key in so balance, balance, is to make sure that you have that and you don't lose that. Now to our C, we're doing the ABC. C is coordination. Why don't you give us the definition of coordination? Okay, coordination is the organization of the different elements of complex body or activity so as to enable them to work together effectively. That was very technical. <laughs> so, let's well, put it in layman's terms. Basically, it's, it's using multiple body parts to work together. You think of eye-hand coordination. We've done like tennis ball shows where you grab a tennis ball real quickly. Volleyball with balloons. balloons. Yeah, one of the best um, coordinations is tactile coordination, which really is just writing. Think about the coordination it takes typing to actually write. Typing on a keyboard. Pi playing piano, yeah. typing on a keyboard. Those are tactile. We're gonna do something a little more physical today. We're going to lean on the ball. If you don't have a ball, that's fine. You can use your couch or something. And then we're going to lift one leg. So now you're actually using strength. You see how the ball wants to roll. So you have to use so many muscles to keep the ball from rolling away. And Whoa. in the meantime, you're using your other leg to stand on one foot and balance, which we just did a second ago. So this combines balance and coordination and strength. I mean, you're combining a lot of things. And you can do this if you don't have a ball. You can go Whoa. do this, lean against something or a chair or even just this takes do this you can actually do it without mm -hmm. so real key which the little girl's doing on the screen behind you kind of <laughs> <laughs> all right last one that was the a agility balance coordination now we're going to do strength, strength training and strength is to be physically strong 
exert force, I'm trying to read the actual definition, <laughs> or pressure. Yeah, so you exert force or pressure. Normally you'd use resistance training with some dumbbells or something that gives you resistance. Today we're gonna use body weight or on our first exercise, just the weight of this, which isn't much, so you could use dumbbells and things, but since we just had the exercise ball, we're gonna use that. We just wanna squat down, grab our ball, we're gonna lift and press it overhead. And then maybe press it behind. I don't know if I can get the ball you back there because I'm back too there? little. <laughs> squat back down. <laughs> and place the ball. So the squat is really gonna work your strength because you're using your upper body weight so you have your own resistance. You know, and you're you staying down here, squatting the whole time. So again, we're gonna press up from behind. I can't get the ball behind okay, me. Okay, you can just press in front if you want. Do a couple presses and then squat down and place the ball. The importance of squatting down, in other words, we're not just going like this and just dropping the ball right, down. Actually you wanna squatting. squat to actually get that extra squat. And then you can go faster if you want. You could work this for agility if you use speed and quickness. <laughs> So this is our strength training. So we've combined everything. We had agility, we had balance, we had coordination, and now we're adding strength. Sorry. Worried about my shirt. So we encourage you, do these, you know, doing the rest of the show while we continue to talk about some other things. We're gonna do a health quiz and study scripture. You can keep doing those exercises if you want to and but do them throughout is, the week. And this is such an important, this is such an important show because as we continue to age, and we all do. So this is for someone at any age. Yes. And that's the, even kids, they're taught early on coordination, balance, all those things. And it develops as they get older. And, and their then, physical activities. They go out and play yeah. in the yard for hours and hours and hours. It's cardio, well, it's they, physical activity, yeah. it's exercise. So you hope they do that. Stay like a child at heart. Yes. Let's get to our health quiz. Okay. So this is really interesting. We actually took all of this um, from the American College of Sports Medicine. We have to take these quizzes and courses to keep our license current, so it's just ongoing education. So that's where all these questions are coming from. So the first pro question, I'll let you do the... You, you ask, I'll answer. Okay. How's that? Protein is important for building muscles. True or false? I'll, I'll give the them answer. a second at home to think about it. That answer is true. Yes, that's correct. Protein is vital. It's for muscle maintenance, growth, and development. Protein and amino acids are muscle builders. Now, we're talking about muscles not for, of course, you know, people that work out and bodybuild and all that, that you know when you have a heavy workout regimen, you're going to need extra protein after you work out. Absolutely. So that's key. But everyone needs protein to continue muscle strength. And, development. and that's so what that's... a lot of these questions have to do with. We talked earlier about the RABCs of exercise and building muscle and staying strong. If you don't eat properly, that's right. it's not going to do you any good. So anyway, we'll, we'll get on. What's question number two? Almond milk is one of the best sources of protein. True or false? Almond this milk. Think about one. that for a second. That is false. That's a little sound effect. You are correct. <laughs> Almond milk only has one gram of protein. And a lot of people love all these milks, and they're great. There's nothing wrong with them, but don't let that be your only source. Yeah, one gram of protein yeah. is nothing. You need 30 to 40 grams exactly. per meal. So one gram, protein basically, per yeah, meal. you're not getting right. any, meal, any protein from that. And soy and quinoa is a great protein source. There are many out there. I encourage you to do your research and find out. Except soy is not good for men, so you don't want men eating or drinking lots of soy. The best source of protein, chicken. Yes, actually better than eggs. Um, Eggs only have about six grams of protein, which is, is not, chicken can have 40 or more. So anyway, chicken, 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 great protein. Okay, I love this one because a lot of people didn't actually, anyway. Any cheese is good protein, true or false? Any cheese. Any so if cheese I go to the grocery store and you've got that, I mean, they've got everything from right. Parmesan to Gouda to- Any cheese, no, all not kinds any of cheese, cheese. No, any of them can't are. be any. That's absolutely correct. Think about it this way. If it is processed cheese, it's made from oils. Yes, you have to have good fats for the brain, and there's nothing wrong with certain oils, but to think that you're getting a protein source that is cheese and it's more oil than anything else because it's processed, then it's not good. So, so dairy, dairy, dairy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, your best source of cheese protein would be one made with goat milk, cow's milk, milk of some kind because it's, really good for you. Okay, um, I just need to commit myself to low fat, no fat, 
low carb, no carb diet, and everything will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these, these questions we actually took from, you know, conversations that we have with people, but um, that answer is no, that is not true. That is you can't Correct. just go on a low carb, no carb, uh, whatever. There's, a, I mean, we actually did a show on diets and listed like a name of a hundred different diets. And anyway, that was kind of interesting. But um, diets yeah. don't work. No. It's a lifestyle change. Diets have you focus on what you can't do, not what you can do and what you probably should be. And they are successful for a short. You can definitely yeah. lose weight, but you can lose weight by fasting for three days. Doesn't mean it's healthy for you. But anyway, we won't That's get into correct. that, but yes. We're not asking, I mean, you think about Christian Fitness has been around for over 12 years, and one of our focuses is always on eating healthy, right. eating real foods, whole foods, being healthy. So that's very, very important. So um, yeah, focus more on your meal plan and getting the right nutrients than I've got to be on this certain diet. Right. Vitamin D is essential to me being healthy, true or false? Absolutely yes. true. <laughs> Vitamin D deficiency reduces your ability to absorb potassium and other nutrients. So vitamin D, it's not a misnomer. It is very important. Vitamin D builds the immunity system. Your immune system grows and stays strong because you're getting all the nutrients you need. Right. And vitamin D is key, key, key. Go outside, get vitamin D, but also take a supplement if of it. If you need to, sure. Yeah, but it keeps if you're, if you're low on it, you will not absorb the other nutrients you need. That's so important. A lot of people don't realize that. And that's what I talked about. And I said fasting for three days. A lot of people say, oh, you should fast and all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you fast for three days and don't get vitamin D, guess what? You don't right. absorb the other nutrients that oh, you need. Oh, we totally believe in fasting. It can be extremely dangerous. Yeah. Yes, so you have to be careful with that. But yeah, just a lack of vitamin D it depletes your body of all the other nutrients because you can't absorb them right. anymore. That's why, yeah, it's important to get sun, sunlight. As we get older, we can't absorb B12 as well from foods, true or false. As we get older, like well, how much older? Older? I, I, there's, <laughs> That's true. That, that was true. part of our course and it didn't say an age. <laughs> as so. we get older, that is true. You, you don't absorb true. vitamin B12 so as well. So sometimes we have to take a supplement. So in a case of a vitamin B12 supplement, it's really, really good to take. Take a sublingual, that means one that melts in your mouth. Make sure that you're getting a good source. Read, ask if you go to a health food store, what's the best? You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of Make times. Make sure that you're getting one that's not full of fillers and other yeah. stuff. Okay, I don't like fish, so I must not need omega-3s. True or false? <laughs> I, love this, I love this question only because we hear people say that a lot. They'll say, well, I crave this food, therefore my body must need it. That is not true. If I crave ice cream, it doesn't mean me, my body needs ice cream. It might mean that I'm addicted to sugar. So no, just because your body craves or doesn't crave something doesn't mean that you need it or don't need it. So that would well, be false. Well, we could false. say this too. If your body is craving something like spinach, then yeah, you probably need spinach because it's a good source of iron. But if it's craving stuff, it's stuff. <laughs> you know, you might have a sugar problem. Right. So anyway. So no, that's um, not true. If you don't crave fish, you do need fish. You need yes. omega-3s and we'll you talk about that. You have to have yeah. a fatty type oil. Your brain, it's key for your brain to have oils and fats. It's key. And your whole body. It's so, so well, here, good let, for your Let health. me read the official. It says omega-3s are great for reducing scarpopenia and building muscles, which is what we've been talking about all this time. Mm -hmm. um, and the omega-3s from fish, which we should have 250 to about 500 milligrams a day um, of some kind, are fatty fish. And the fatty fish are salmon, trout, mackerel, herring, albacore tuna. Um, and then I'll throw one in extra for uh, plus tilapia. I know tilapia. Well, that's not a plus. It, well, wait you a minute. You said you're going to add it for a I, plus. No, it's, it's plus, not a plus. plus it's a negative. information. <laughs> yes, plus information. Tilapia is a good fish, but it's not a fatty fish. It's not really even a good fish because tilapia is farm raised. And I always encourage people please eat wild caught. Don't eat farm raised. If you can. If you can. Um, because that's where your real pure source is coming from. Now, tilapia does have a little bit of omega-3. I mean, more so than much. chicken or beef, but right. very little. So try to get some of these fatty fishes for your omega-3s. Okay. I was born this way. My entire family and my heritage and my grandparents, that's in my genetics. True or false? Another I'm big question. Bone. That's another, in my yeah, genetics. another question. You, you, you hear this all the time. People say, "Well, you know, my grandfather was this, or my grandparents were this," and maybe not even just you know as far as your body composition goes. They'll right. say it about you know, it's high blood pressure is genetic. A lot of the a lot yes. of 
physical issues are genetic and you can inherit those things. Um, a lot of them you don't inherit, you just inherit the habit that leads to that. Correct. So I would say it's partially true, but not completely true. You can change, we, we call this your destiny. Um, what your genetics are, what your grandparents, your parents and all that, you know, your, your lineage is, that's your destiny, but you can change your destiny. So absolutely. even if you, even if you have self control high blood, and discipline in what you eat, how yeah, you eat, and some of the healthy or meal plans or, we've yeah. talked about today, right. um, but even high blood pressure, if you follow a good meal plan with the nutrients yes. that we're talking about, a really good meal plan can be as effective on high blood pressure as the first level medication they put you on. So just That's diet exactly and exercise, right. and I shouldn't say diet, a proper meal a plan. Proper we just said diet. you don't want to diet. The proper <laughs> meal plan and exercise That's is exactly as effective right. as the first level medication. So that's what I talk about. You can change your destiny. You don't have to say, well, my mother had this or my father had this. No, change that destiny. Yeah. Exercise, eat right, do the things you need to do. So just a few tips on simple things that really make a lot of difference. So, and you know, all of this, you could go on the computer, go on your computer and learn these things. Read, be educated, yeah. and find out what does your body need to be able to continue to age well. And read the label. We heard someone say that, oh, almond milk is so good for you, it has 65 grams. No, it has one gram, but on the cover it said, men should, men have, should 65 have 65 grams, grams per meal or per something meal. like that. That's yeah. what they read and they thought that's how many grams were in the almond milk. So anyway, read carefully, read carefully. Yes. All right, well, go grab your Bible or your cell phone, or however you want to study the Word with us today. We are going to get into the Word, and we have 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to do 57 through 58. I love this. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 through 58. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I mean, God has given us His Spirit. Jesus came in, we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and He has given us the Holy Spirit. So He's given us everything that the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit that lives in you, who the Holy Spirit is, lives in you and has given you self-control and temperance and every spiritual blessing that we could possibly have. And when you think about that, when you go through something, that means that you're immovable. Mm -hmm. you, you are so steadfast on the course of how God has called you with your family, with your friends, with everybody else. It's being steadfast. Things happen. People see things happen. Things happen every day. But if you are steadfast on the Lord, you know who you are in Christ Jesus, that you can do all things through Christ who gives you, the str gives you strength, that you have the peace of God living in you, and that you have God's wisdom, and that He directs your path every day, that that when you're steadfast and immovable from the circumstances that are around you, then you are being a witness of Christ Jesus. And that every time you speak to somebody about Jesus or you want to lead someone to the Lord, that is being a part of what the gospel of Christ is to glorify God. We were put on this earth to glorify God. So when you think about that, when you go through something, be immovable, know who you are, read the Word, and let the Word abound in you richly. Yeah, I mean, you think about Paul. Yeah. Paul wrote this, and Paul went through imprisonment. He went through being shipwrecked, beaten. being beaten <laughs> several times, <laughs> um, being put in barracks, and being, you know, even if he wasn't in prison the whole time, but he was in barracks at times. I mean, he still was a witness to everyone, and he knew that everything he did for the Lord was not in vain. He stayed steadfast on how he knew he was called. Well, you, you break this verse down. We love to break the scripture down and really study it. This very first verse, but give thanks to God who gives us the victory. That's right. Now, we Jesus, the Holy Spirit conquerors. in us is Jesus, is God. And that's what you have the victory through and with. So Jesus gave us victory over sin. He gave us victory over death. And that's what Paul's saying here. Focus on these things. You've got the victory. Why, why are you looking somewhere else when you've got the victory? You know the victory. The victory lives in you. Lori said the peace lives inside of you. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. So then he, he breaks it down a little bit more and he says, therefore my beloved brethren. He's writing this to the church at Corinth yeah. and he's calling them my beloved brethren. And yet now we read it and this is God's letter to us. Right. 
And what he's saying about the steadfast, this is the church at Corinth. They had kind of ran into some issues and some backsliding. They actually had fallen under false teaching. And Paul's trying to correct them, say, no, 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 stay steadfast. Stay on the resurrection of Jesus. Stay on the resurrection of life. Stay on the things, you know, the principles that we've taught you. Don't get distracted by these false teachings because false teachers would come in like they have for the thousands of years since, but false teachers will come in and teach things contrary to what the Word says. That's so Paul's why Paul's saying important. stay steadfast. And that's why you said know the Word. Know the Word. Yes. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Know that everything He's given us, we are so, it's not just a blessed thing. It is the blessing of God to live in us yes. and dwell in us and teach us and walk in His peace and His wisdom. So, but you think about, he gave us the victory. The victory is knowing who you are in Christ mm -hmm. and not being moved by circumstances. That's the victory. And he gave us that victory. He became, Jesus became victory for us. He became sin for us. I mean, you think about, he became curse for us. So we can't be cursed because we live under that blessing of God. Yes, immovable. So, so yeah. you aren't moved by your emotions. You That's aren't moved right. by what's going on on the outside. There's always craziness. I don't, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It's always craziness because there's just but craziness you in the world. On the you don't focus on that. You focus on the victory, and that's what he's saying. Don't be. Don't move onto that. Don't go after that flashy. Oh, look, a, a bright object or whatever. <laughs> Stay focused on the word. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory yes. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, that's all of us. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's awesome. That, we didn't even get to that part. Your labor is not in vain. So anything that you're doing for the gospel, Lori said leading someone to the Lord, whatever you might do, if you're right. cleaning you know, the floors, mopping the floors, setting up chairs at church, cleaning the toilets, whatever it is, that effort is not in vain Helping because your father member. sees it. That's right. right. Just like in the natural, if a child cleans the bathroom, the parents know it. The parents know, oh my gosh, the, the child cleaned that bathroom. Same thing, your works and labors for the Lord are never in vain. As long as they're always in the, for the Lord, they're never never in vain. Your witness of who Jesus is in you can never be in vain because someone gets to see God in you, loving them and showing them by the witness of who you are by being unmovable by a circumstance of Christ in you. What would you say to somebody out there that doesn't know that peace, doesn't have that peace on the inside? If you are not sure about who you are in Christ, I please read your word, read the word, get a Bible if you don't have one. It, but it starts first with receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple as opening your heart and saying, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Thank you that you died on the cross for me and that you shed your blood for me and that I want you to be the Lord of Lords in my heart and help change me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love that. Help change me. And that's what it is. He's the one that has the victory over sin, not us in our flesh. Yeah. So you've got to rely on him to do that, and he will. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had fun today with the ABCs, with maybe our health quiz, some yeah. things that you might have learned that you didn't know. And we always pray with you with 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you guys. God bless.